water. Earth. Fire. Air. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Mike and Brian revealed a first look at their new Avatar The Last Airbender animated movie that's coming out in 2025, so we'll break it all down. Also explain what's happening with the brand new Avatar The Last Airbender animated series that are starting to come out that same year, as well as the live-action Netflix Avatar The Last Airbender series, which is coming out later this year, too. So there's a lot of Avatar coming to our TV screens in the next couple of years. Of course, I will do videos for everything. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all those videos. I'll do a special giveaway when we start getting episodes later this year, too. But at CinemaCon this week, they revealed an actual first look at the brand new Avatar The Last Airbender animated movie that Mike and Brian are doing. It's meant to tee up the big Avatar universe that they're expanding. Basically, when they announced they were coming back to the project, to the series, they were going to be making a bunch more TV series set in the universe and a bunch more movies as well, but all in the animated universe. All the live action stuff that's completely separate, that's Netflix stuff. The very first movie they're doing is about the adult gang, as you can see here, set after the events of book three. The funny thing about this is it actually doesn't look too different from a lot of the fan art that we've seen from everybody the last several years. One of the notable differences, though, is that Aang does not have a beard, and he does have a beard in all the adult Aang that we see during Korra. During those episodes, he was actually closer to the end of his life, closer to his 40s. Looking at that epic ponytail that Zuko has, how much older Katara looks, I would say they're within 10 years older than the end of book three. Like very early 20s Aang, even though technically his body is much, much older. They didn't say who the villain's going to be, but they're not doing the exact plot of the comics, but they did say that the plot of the comics will start to become canon. For the most part, it's all meant to be canon. If you haven't read any of those, the comics basically tell you exactly what happens to them right after the finale. Like Aang and Fire Lord Zuko create Republic City, or they start creating Republic City, it takes a while to build it. Azula comes back to harass Zuko, doing exactly what you would expect adult Azula to do. They explain who Toph's baby daddies are. She had two different baby daddies. And they explain what happened to Zuko's mother. I've already done a couple videos about all that stuff, so I'll post links for that stuff in the description below. And really, the only thing that you don't get from this first look scene here is that it's actually going to be 3D animation. That'll probably be the biggest difference from all the previous Avatar series, which were 2D animation. They did say that for all the different upcoming Avatar series and movies, they would all probably have slightly different animation styles. They have about three different movies that are in development right now. The adult gang one is just the first one. That means that all three of those movies might have slightly different animation styles, as well as the TV series in the way that the original Avatar The Last Airbender series had a very different animation style from Legend of Korra when that aired. Brian Konietzko was recently talking about the future of Avatar as well, too. Now we're getting to expand the franchise in different directions all at once. Now we're making a movie, our first movie. And so that always, as an artist, that, that was like really alluring to me. I can't really wrap my head around the final mix and the final color correction on the feature. Now we're talking about doing multiple projects at the same time, including feature films. It's really cool to hear him talking about Avatar again. They've been working on it for a while now. They're just really quiet about it. They said that it took them almost four years to develop the original Avatar The Last Airbender series, and they only announced the project close to about four years ago, which is why it's taking so long for them to release all this, because they're trying to build out an entire universe. But the really good news you probably just saw in your feeds is that Mike and Brian's first new, remember this, first new but not last new animated Avatar The Last Airbender series is now confirmed to be about the next Avatar after Korra, moving the timeline forward the same way that Korra just came after Aang. The Avatar cycle goes fire, air, water, and earth. So when Mike and Brian first announced that they were making new animated Avatar movies and series, most of us just speculated that they'd logically just move the timeline forward and do the next Avatar after Korra, which would be an Earthbender Avatar. But they are also doing stuff earlier in the timeline too, like they'll be jumping all over the timeline in a bunch of different types of projects. I'll explain later in the video. But the new full regular animated series will just pick up after Korra has died and the new Earthbender Avatar is born. They haven't announced who the person's name is or if it's going to be a female or a male avatar. But if you've been following the story of Korra in the comics that explains what happens to her after the events of the finale, her lifespan is meant to be fairly typical of the majority of all avatars, meaning she lived beyond 100 years old. What you would consider like a slightly longer lifespan for a really healthy person living past 100 in the avatar universe isn't uncommon for regular people. 
The only major exceptions to how long avatars live are when they're either killed in battle, like killed under mysterious circumstances, or the most famous examples being Avatar Kyoshi and Avatar Aang. Aang died when he was 66 chronologically, and at the time it was considered a very early death in terms of his years spent walking around like chronologically, but biologically he died at the age of 166 because he was stuck in the ice for over 100 years, and being in the Avatar state for that long just took a huge toll on his body. Had that not happened, he would have just lived a normal lifespan well past 100 years. The other exception, like on the other end of that, is Kyoshi, who lived way longer than most avatars. She was about 200 years old when she died, but she was a beast. She was also just physically way bigger than most people. One of the new animated movies that they're doing is a Kyoshi movie. I'll talk about that later in the video. So they are doing a lot of new Kyoshi stuff too. But the idea is that this new Earthbender Avatar series after Korra would pick up about 100 years after the Korra finale, close to or at real world present day, like a modern day Avatar, like a lot of people wondered that they would do. So the idea is that during the events of Korra, Republic City, for example, had a very roaring 20s inspired vibe with the design and the level of technology, the way bending had evolved. This new series would look more like our real world present day, like an Avatar walking around with our current level of technology. But remember, this is the Avatar universe, so it's not always like a one-to-one -one comparison. Like the best example being, will this new Avatar be the one who walks around with an iPhone in his or her pocket, like the TikTok Avatar? Please don't put TikTok in the Avatar universe, we could do without that. This is where I think Mike and Brian will change a couple things, like the current period in the Avatar universe will just be similar in the way science starts to rival traditional use of bending elements. Like during the events of Legend of Korra, their big thing was showing that just 50 years plus after Avatar The Last Airbender, society had evolved to start harnessing lightning bending powers to generate electricity. People like Kuvira began to harness spirit energy taken from the vines in the world tree, using them to power weapons and technology. People like Beifong were using their metal bending abilities to power their technology for crime fighting. Like not just their tactics, but also their armor, their weaponry. What we'll probably see is more of that kind of thinking, like scientists in the future of the Avatar universe finding new ways of exploiting bending energy, cosmic energy, from the spirit world, for weapons, for technology, even for just regular everyday stuff that non-benders use and take advantage of. They started to get into this idea during Korra Season 4, where some people had started to harvest, abuse spirit energy, cosmic energy, the spirit world started to fight back, the spirits themselves, the biological life that originated there, like the vines that started to take over Republic City. So when the way the Korra series in general had started to get into the balance between bending and technology, a modern day Avatar series would be all about that. Like the other cool thing being that every time they do advance the timeline of the Avatar universe is that bending in general just evolves as people come up with more creative ways to use their bending powers. You start to see even more specialized forms of sub-bending. Let me know in the comments what kind of sub-styles of bending do you want to see just based on what we've already seen from sub-bending styles. I know there's also a big question about the way avatars access their previous lives because during the events of Korra, Unalak essentially destroyed her access to the previous lives with Vatu's dark avatar powers. After that, Korra never got access to those previous avatars again. She could only speak with Rava, which was something that previous avatars weren't supposed to be able to do. Like maybe a few were able to, but in general when Korra did it, it was thought to be a relatively new thing. Like Rava had always been there inside the other avatars, but you never hear about Aang chatting it up with Rava. Meaning that when this new Earthbender avatar comes along a hundred years later, he'd only be able to speak with Korra, Spirit, or Rava. Unless they introduce some new weird wrinkle to the way avatar powers work. Right now, the target release date is the end of 2025, right after the new animated Avatar The Last Airbender movie comes out. So you kind of see what they're doing here. They're going to try and release that new movie in October 2025, and then like right after that, the series picks up. The new Avatar series will run at the same time as the live-action Netflix series, but the live-action Netflix episodes are just retelling the events of the original Avatar The Last Airbender animated series with Aang. And by the time the new animated series premieres, we'll be in like season two of the live action series. And while that's happening, every two or every three years, they'll release a new animated Avatar movie. They've already announced three movies total. The first one is with the adult gang, but the second two are a Zuko movie and a Kyoshi movie. They didn't say which order they're going to do them in, but I'm assuming right now it starts with the Avatar The Last Airbender movie about the whole gang, because they've confirmed that, then the Zuko movie, and then the Kyoshi movie. There will be more animated movies and more animated series after these first ones from Mike and Brian. They probably won't talk about the other stuff till after later seasons of this first new one though. So like this is meant to be the beginning of a big Avatar universe of shows from all across the timeline. 
So when you're all old and gray and you have like great grandchildren, you'll be telling them about the original Avatar series as the new one gets ready to premiere. Like, ah, the 10th new Avatar series. Can't wait to talk about it. It'll be a lot of fun. They've also said that they're evolving or changing the animation style for the upcoming movie. They'll probably do the same thing for the Avatar TV series as well. They did say that they wanted all their upcoming projects, like all the different movies in the series, to all feel and look very different. But they did say the first upcoming movie will feature computer-assisted animation in the style of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Like that kind of computer-assisted animation is coming from the same studio that also animated Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which actually has pretty solid animation. The Netflix account was teasing some Avatar stuff, so they might make some more announcements or drop a teaser video for that new live-action Netflix series pretty soon. Whatever they wind up releasing, of course I'll do a video for it. Everyone click here for all my Avatar The Last Airbender videos, and click here for my brand new Ahsoka video, because I'll be doing episodes for that pretty soon. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.